Hello and welcome to another edition of PCHEM Lab Screencast. I'm uh, Jeff Yarger and today we're going to briefly go through an example of some propagation of error and uh, the example I'm going to give is using you know an ideal gas law equation of state and so I'm hoping this will help. Uh, let's take an example that we would see in freshman chemistry. Um, we have a container that's uh, 30.1 liters in uh, size. Um, it's closed off and in it there's a gas. That gas is at, so the volume is 30.1 liters. It's at a pressure of 1.1 atmosphere and a temperature of 298 degrees Kelvin. So what is the number of moles of gas inside that vessel? And what we're really going to focus on today is also what's the associated error. So let's start with the real simple which is we know that freshman chemistry, PV is equal to NRT, the pressure times the volume is equal to the number of moles times the gas constant times the temperature. We can solve for N, PV over RT. We could plug in values here. We said it's 1.1 atmospheres. Um, it's a volume of 30.1 liters. The gas constant in those units right, is uh, 0. 0.8 uh, 0 0.08082058 and that is liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin and then a temperature of 298 Kelvin and so if we you know solve uh, for this correctly we get basically one point three five moles of gas. So that would be just uh, solving a freshman chemistry equation but now let's assume that we know a little more about this system and that what we've said in physical chemistry is it's not just 30.1 liters but it's 30.1 liters plus or minus something and we should be able to either estimate that based on you know how we can calculate the size of the vessel or really measure the volume in some accurate way. And so let's assume we've done that and that we found that you know the volume is plus or minus um, 50 milliliters. So that's how well we know it that the um, pressure is you know a strain gauge is plus or minus say 0.01 or 0.1 atmospheres and that we're measuring it with a thermometer that we can measure to you know an accuracy of you know one degree you know Celsius or, or Kelvin in this case uh, they would be the same right so in a sense where we can you know rewrite this so that the pressure is 1.1 atmospheres plus or minus 0 0.1 atmospheres and you could you know write that as 1.1 plus or minus 0 0.1 the whole thing atmospheres. So there's several ways to write this and that's provided in a review etc. The volume is 30.1 plus or minus 0 0.05 liters to keep it in the same units right and then the temperature is 298 we'll say you know again it makes it seem like here that it's a integer number but this is a measured value so 298.0 plus or minus 1.0 Kelvin and we could so so now we have each of these so one of the tempting things to do is to do the same operations with the error that you do you know on this one but you find that that gives ludicrous values because it would mean that the more error you have in say something like the temperature if you went from one degree Kelvin error to two degrees Kelvin error etc it would be making the overall error in the system smaller and smaller even though the error and the temperature is going higher and higher which makes no physical sense so the way error is propagated uh, so the uncertainty in some value in this case uh, it's going to be the uncertainty in um, the number of moles of the system, the number of moles of the system, would go as um, the uncertainty in the number of moles, certainty in the pressure squared, and so these are the partials of each of those. So it's the partial. Uh, 
in the equation with respect to pressure um, times the uncertainty in that pressure squared. And this is go on for every, so this would be just whatever variables you have. So we have volume, right? The uncertainty in the volume squared plus the uncertainty in the number of moles with respect to temperature and its uncertainty in temperature squared. So these are the error measurements squared. These are the partials of uh, of each of the independent variables in there. And we don't have an error for a gas constant, so uh, we don't include that. And then you take the oops, sorry about that the square root of the whole thing. Um, and so in a sense what we need to do is calculate, we have these individual errors here. We know each of these individual errors, they're given here, the error in temperature is one, the error in volume is here, the error in pressure is there, right? So we, each, we know each of those individually. What we need to do is look at each of these partials. And so let's just, you know, look at one, you know, to get a, a, a sense, right? Like, so what is the partial in the number of moles with respect to the pressure, right? And what it's assuming here is every, everything else is constant. R, V, T is constant in that. So that would be, you know, the way you would kind of formally write that. So it's kind of typically written more shorthanded like this, right? So it's the partial with respect to pressure of P, V over R, T, right? And these are all volume, R, and T are all constant. P is the only thing that varies, the partial with respect. So dP, dP is 1, and then we get V over RT, right? So this is just V over RT, right? So now we have V over RT that we plug in right there. We take the square of everything. We do this for all the variables, and then that's how we can generally determine the error and associated with this. To, to show you this, I want to um, show you that in uh, Mathematica, uh, because I think this is the way a lot of you will formally use it, but I think you can see how we could look at each of the partials now. We could now plug in these variables and quickly get the overall uncertainty and, um, you know, in this measurement. And, and I'll show you in the Mathematica um, how we do that. So. Uh, instead of continuing on with this, what I'll do is show you a spreadsheet I've done in Mathematica. Uh, let's see if I can make it a little larger. Um, um, magnified. There we go. Okay. So now I, I'll put this up on the web for everyone, but it basically goes through the same thing so we can calculate the number of moles. And so I've done that. It's exactly what we did last time. I started with clearing all the variables. This is just giving some annotation. This is text right here. Uh, but these are the input um, for Mathematica. And if I recalculate it, um, you can see I get the value that we calculated earlier. Now, like I said, you can include errors here and it basically keeps those errors intact, uh, but it, it doesn't calculate. Um, what's incorrect to do is just take these error values, assuming there's no error in the R and then calculate it with the same equation. Obviously, it doesn't make any sense when you calculate R with zero because that, that would make it undefined. But even if you give it a, an error, right? So you know, it does a very counterintuitive things. If you, if you make the error smaller, so, you know, s several degrees smaller, the error, you know, the, the amount of error in the measurement just went up, you know, the overall error in the number of moles just went up by making the error in the gas constant smaller, which makes no intuitive sense at all. So that doesn't work. The other thing that doesn't work is to, um, which is a, a common misconception, is to take the overall, um, 
number of moles of the system and then add and subtract them and then uh, get subtract those from each other. So add the amount of error, subtract the amount of error from each one, do the equation twice. That doesn't work either. So again, when we propagate error, we take the partial in a function with respect to each independent variable. We square that. We multiply it by the square of the error. This is how it's easier to write in Mathematica form, where this is basically the same thing. So this is the partial in the function with respect to x. This is the partial with respect to x in the function. So it's just how Mathematica writes it. And so I've done that for the exact one we've uh, talked about here, which is the partial with respect to pressure, volume, and temperature. And so this is now, it's taken the partial with respect to each of those variables, squared them all for me. So it's done them all out for me here. And now I just substitute what all the values are. So we know the pressure, volume, and temperature. Uh, the gas constant, and then we know the error in the pressure, volume, and temperature. So now I can calculate the number of moles, and I can calculate the error in the number of moles, which is 0 0.123, which is if you continued on the handwritten calculation I should do, that's what you should get out. And then I don't know why um, Mathematica isn't simplifying this to the square root of the square of moles should be just the moles. So now you would write this as 1.35 plus or minus 0.12 moles. I hope that helped give you a, a concrete example and I'll uh, update this further with some more examples.